Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jake Kerr, I'm from Black Ink and today I'm joined by Anthony Phillips Jones, who is actually my landlord. <sighs> Don't tell anybody. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. So uh, I think a very suitable place to start is the fact that all of this that I do for Black Ink is 100% possible because of our interaction we had when, when I came to you and said like I need somewhere to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rental market was pretty poor, wasn't it? Terrible. Hard to get a place. We checked out one, okay, so a bit of backstory, we were living in the caravan. I've been working with e-commerce a little bit. I was learning how to basically make a product look good and sell it online. Yeah. And I took those uh, skills, uh, brought them over to Black Ink and then decided to go as hard as I could with Black Ink. I ended up moving back down to Bunbury with uh, my girlfriend and, or with Riz. And we got to a point where living in dad's backyard wasn't the, the most ideal situation for Black Ink and for us. And also, you know, living in a caravan, you get to a certain point. I like, jumped in there as well, give your hand, put that. Pat under the caravan as well. Oh, bro. Mm. I'm so glad. Had to make it work, didn't we? I'm glad we put the uh, energy into just getting in here sooner rather than yeah, later. Yeah, no, good choice, I think, because you've just blossomed since. It's crazy. Space and operate, you know, within your life. With, you know, just have a house to do what you need. And the first thing everyone says when they walk in is like, what is this? Yeah. What's this part of the house uh, that realistically I mean when you explain the story like that does make sense and if you know you it does make sense mm. but realistically this area is it would be like a weird second lounge room or it could be a granny flat that shares a toilet it's well when I was living here we used to call it the tavern yeah so we put the bar on the back and pool table we were sitting yep handful of other entertainment the room was graffitied out I'm not sure if you ever saw the graffiti in the, on the wall as I got here when you should have left it on here for dude dude oh, tell anyway, me about it I know you are paint, painting over the last bit of it just over here when yeah, I walked in the door yeah yeah oh right I could probably go away not doing this job because you probably would have loved it yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh it adds a little bit more culture or character I guess well I, I like bright spaces and I'm a creative type an arty farty kind of fella and I just like having my own personality on display a bit yeah of course um, the new space I've got is something similar it's all white walls at the moment and I can't wait to get can't wait to go nuts with the, the graph paints. Do you and, do it yourself? Yeah, just self-taught. You know, read, yep. a few, read a few books, watch a few things on YouTube, you know, the University of YouTube, and basically come up with the design and throw it up. And off you go, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. You're, um, I, I'd be honest, like, the, how old are you? I'm 46. Right, so I'm mm. 30 at the end of the year. Mm. So 16-year age gap. I don't really know anyone in your in your kind of age group that is as like versatile but self-taught at the same time yeah i'm um, one of those people i haven't met too many people like me i know that sounds a bit uh facetious but um i can watch something two or three times and i pick it up yeah but i'm a watch learner right yeah so for me to sit down and read a book because i i don't know I just, I just can't seem to read any more than 20 pages in a book and and get it into my mind Yep. and keep it there and regurgitate that. But if somebody shows me something and takes me through the process, it's unlocked. for some reason, I, it goes straight into my brain and I pick it up and I can repeat it. Mm. I've had people say to me, how do, you know, how do you know to hang a door? How do you know to, how to uh, paint a house? How do you know to put a roof on a house? How do you know to do the stuff. weld this or make that? Or yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just skill sets. And I just I find something I find interesting and I do my best to learn it. I think it's the ability to learn. Once you have the yeah. ability to learn... yeah. And you gotta have a thirst for it. You, you gotta you gotta be um, um, industrious to a point to take it all on. You know, a couple of my neighbours have seen me do this place up over the years. Say you never stop. Yeah, but that's just my inherent internal energy. I just I just keep going. I think there is an organic nature in, and this is generalised, and I don't think anyone's going to pull me up on this, but in men that we like to especially like spaces. We love to create spaces. Mm. We love to really like, obviously security is a big part of what we organically do. We create secure spaces so that yep. we can have our family. We know we're all good. Yep. I think there is something in the, in like the way the world is at the moment, maybe the next generation that are coming through that they don't have that flair organically because they get fed by other yeah. chemicals. Yep. But I think like where I've kind of maybe like taken advantage of it is like, as I said, like I've got this ability to learn now and now I just want to keep learning. Yeah, and you are. It's in your proof. You're showing it. Well, I say it every week or two. I speak to you. It's something yeah, different. I'm it's asking about something. what you're doing next because I'm trying to get down the same path and yeah. in, in a different, different theme. But yeah, it's it's. Uh, I love it. I just yeah. I find myself forgetting stuff because like, you've only got so much space in you. Yeah. And you're not going to. A friend of mine said to me the other day, he said, uh, do you remember when we went down to the coast and we did that? And I, I struggled to remember it. And it was a happy, great time that we did many times. And. Shit, I'm also <laughs> run out of run out of bloody ram, you know. Uh, 
I think there's a couple of ways you can look at it though. Again, a lot, not a lot of people try and like, I think they don't try and create, like sure everyone wants to go on holiday and they want to have a weekend away and they want to do this, but they don't actually actively do the shit. No. Nah, like yeah. I'm having fun yeah. all the fucking time. Yeah. You know, yeah. if I forget some stuff, of course I do. Yeah, love, you know? Life's for living. Yeah, dude. <clears throat> and I find it hard to be around people, um, and I'm not knocking them, that spend all the time on a computer, playing right. computer games. I find that's a waste of life. But they love it and they're happy. I guess that's the the higher point there, but it's not for me, of course. I just I just find there's more in life than sitting and watching the screen for most of your life. I think there's so much more out there yeah. that you could absorb. Um, yeah, I, I just think because um, uh, I'm so industrious, I'm always I'm always moving, and I need something to satisfy these two ends. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, I don't know. I I put a lot down to social media. I think it's sometimes you shouldn't just give things one excuse and go. This is why people don't you know care or they're not out chasing things. But I think. When you can see, you know, I've got a mate going to Italy on Sunday for his... for his, um, oh, his luck? Yeah, for his honeymoon. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I may as well go to fucking Italy because I'm going to see all the all the posts on his Instagram and all the rest. Like, I'll get my Italy fix. Yeah. So then I don't have that thing of like, oh, one day I'd love to go to Italy. Mm. You know? And I think mm. that structure repeats itself. Like, I don't need to learn how to wheelie a push bike because I've got someone on my Instagram who does it. Mm. I don't need to, you know, fill in the gap, X, Y, Z. And then that turns into, I can get all of my fill by just scrolling every day. Mm. So therefore, I don't go out and I don't put myself in situations where I'm uncomfortable, where I'm learning, or there's some resilience I have to overcome. Mm. And then you just turn into a fucking person who's behind a screen all day. You're yeah. just a boring yeah. person. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, I fall in the same trap a bit with the phone, you know, flicking through videos, but I'm, I'm attracted to stuff that's fun or um, how-tos or yeah. whatever. And, and it does, it can grow behind. I understand how it can be addictive. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, I often put the phone down so I can get on with what I'm trying to do. So, Dude, I believe there's two types of people in the world. There are creators and there are consumers. And I think that you... Well, I think most of us are consumers. That's right. And I think in reality, like you are one or the other and you can swap. You know what I mean? It goes yeah. from, you know, sometimes I, maybe it's more of a case of like I am 80% a creator and 20% a consumer. Whereas most people might be like 90% consume, 10% create. Yep. And I think that like... I really try and like now, it, the, the place that I'm in now, Black Ink, is I try and really like understand that I am an artist. I am, yeah. a, I am a creator. It is you, my you, job. You have an internal um, creativity. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And it's my job to find out what that is. This is your medium. Yeah. So, yeah. so you use uh, today's world being social media and brand building and that sort of, that's your interesting world. That's what really grabs you and takes all your effort and you, you build it. It's crazy. It doesn't happen without it either. Like you've got to work at this stuff. I just got, I got lucky. With Black Ink, I got lucky. This social media stuff, like yeah. I, I enjoy the structure of it. Yep. I enjoy creating that sort of stuff. And I found it when I was in my 20s. It's mm. fucking ridiculously lucky. Yep. I think that, uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. I think uh, like real artistry and like one of my, one of my like big, not mentors or role models, someone who I look up to though is uh, Daniel Ashram. He's like a, he's like a digital and physical creator, but he creates stuff like out of like, concrete and stone oh, and yeah. like puts yeah. diamonds and shit inside of it and yep. you know you look at someone like him and you go dude that's that's real creating like what I do is manipulating a screen yep but at the same time it's like that's just what the medium is mm. that's where we are you know and as a 46 year old as we pointed out before I'm trying to keep up with the way the world's going yeah and it's moving fast and uh, I remember computers I'm still somewhat computer literate but I'm at a choice when I was younger ah, I don't need computers ah, yeah. I don't need a mobile phone but the world kind of drags you along yeah and you kind of got it at some point now I'm at the point where I'm want to use those tools in my next venture and I have to catch up you have to start from scratch so yeah. I have to start that. <clears throat> but that, that's okay I mean that's just part of the process I mean I've, I've decided to pull a pin on a business that I ran for 14 years and take a completely different take in life not many people do that yeah people want to go right I started here, I want to do my 38 years or 35 years, whatever it might be in the job, pay off my house. Off you go. Stop, live five years and die. Mm. If that's, a, that's, a, that's a real statistic. A lot of people, when they stop, they, for some reason, it has a physical effect and they can drop off the perch. Yeah, that's actually a common story, that one. Well, I, I don't want to be one of those people. I want to be always... Um, I mean, that narrative... Active lends itself to going what you're going to spend your whole life being active so that you can get to a point and not be active how does that work yeah 
you know? Yeah, like, yeah exactly right. Yeah. That's like, that, to me, that's like you want to be a chess champion, but you don't want to do any training, even learn the rules before you get to the event. It's like, you, what the you, fuck are you talking about? You just want the result. Right. And so, that's, that's half of society today. They don't want it now. But also, why? Well, like, what's so good about retiring and sitting? Have you ever sat around the house for a week with nothing to do? No, because I, I've, I've, well, I've just had, well, since I put the pin on the business in mid-February, I've been on self-funded um, long service, you might yeah. call it. Yeah. And um, I've been busy every minute. Yeah. I have a space, a big shed, and all my stuff in it. Um, I've my mates the piss all the time saying you've got too many fucking projects mate yeah just narrow it down to a couple and there's a bit of sense in that and yeah just, <laughs> there I, is I've some actually truth. Kicked, a couple of, kicked a couple of cars out recently so I can make the space yeah and it makes sense but I still need all that I need I don't want to be walking this in and go right today I'm going to go work on the Tirana I'm going to go work on the WB or I'm going to build my mezzanine which I started before I come here today yeah um, and I've got to build my furnace shortly for the new business and yeah that's exciting. There's a list, man. I'll, I'll see your lists around here, and I should probably do the same. I should probably actually get as many out, whiteboards as you can, bro. Yeah, actually write out what I'm doing because I often walk in there and go, mm, "What am I doing?" But yeah, um, it doesn't take long to make a decision to pick something up and prioritise what what needs to be next, and yeah, and do it. I ran a I ran a little experiment with myself. Like I kind of got lucky with my twenties because I I had the advantage of having like well paying jobs and easy access to other well paying jobs that were kind of skilled. So I found myself like. This is probably like five years ago in between the coffee van and, and the black ink kind of rebirth. Yeah. I was driving trucks and I was like, I can make two and a half grand a week at home. Yeah. So yep. let's make as much money as we can. Let's put some away. Yep. And then let's have a period of doing nothing. And yep. I remember like I gave myself a three week holiday. I'm like, I'm going to smoke some weed and yeah. hang out yeah. and do the thing. Live it up. And I realized like a week into this, I'm like, there's only so much fucking coffee you can drink. <laughs> That's right. There's yeah. only so much yeah. Netflix you can watch. There's only so much PS4 you can play. Yep. And you get to a point where you're like, oh, this isn't living. Having no. nothing to do isn't living. I think most most people just want safety in their life. So they get a good job. They go to it Monday to Friday. Look forward to the weekend. Yeah. Do the weekend. And the cycle starts again. It's a seven-day seven, seven day cycle for up to 40 years of working life. Insane. And I think it's insane. I, I, it doesn't sit well with me. Mm. <laughs> you know, I, I, need to, I need to keep interest in my life and keep... keep um, trying new things but you know try and make a dollar from things that i'm doing as well but yeah the amount of people i know that you know just go to work come back not saying not not saying there's nothing wrong with it at all yeah because you know, they still accomplish something to pay off a house and have an asset and all that sort of stuff but you know i've i've always had a uh internal strive to do just a, just a bit better yeah yeah there's a for few... myself not for other people yeah myself. yeah yeah and also like that i think that doing a bit better for yourself as well in that there's that little like well i wonder how much i can achieve mm. i wonder what is possible i wonder if i stay back to an hour doing this thing for me what that actually does for me later on down the track yep and if i do that every day for years what does that turn into yeah and i think well we get on really well and have similar ideas and bounce off each other is because we have this um drive to to so, sort of like being contrarian, do the opposite to what other people do, yeah. and see where it takes us, and not being fri frightened to do it, because you do let go of that safety. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. You know, a dollar could come. You could have ten dollars today and a thousand tomorrow. Yeah, and nothing for two weeks. Yeah, and then and another bit. <laughs> Dude, and that's a, that's the crux of all business. You know, it comes and flows and ebbs and that sort of stuff. And I mean, my missus is still not used to it. She yeah. still wants me to go and work. Because that's what the, that's, that's what makes him feel safe, dude. That's the. Um, that's, I want to. I want to know we got food in the fridge next week. Yeah, that's a definitely. Blue, that's a blueprint for humans now, though. Work that's, a job, be safe, get your eight hundred bucks a week minimum, and keep living. Yep, you and know? it's a system you're born into. Yeah, there's no choice about the system. And this is the thing, man. Like you're talking about that freedom, uh, and like obviously the position we're both in now. We're like we're accountable for every dollar we make, and that can change day to day, hour to hour, right? Yep, yep. And I think. Like some people say to me, like, I can't believe that you're, you're like, obviously not these words, this is what they imply, but you're willing to put yourself in a position where like, you're just going to figure it out. You're putting confidence in yourself that you're yeah. just going to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I think it's fucking crazy that you're going to do the same shit every day until yeah. you die. Yep. Are you yep. kidding me? What's the comparison? A fucking shot at freedom. Yep. If this doesn't work, fine. I got five years of having fun. And you can always go back to a job. If it does work, I'm a fucking millionaire. Hmm. Exactly right. Like, 
Dude, I don't think this is scary. I think I'm going to be sitting on the same beach you are, drinking the same pina coladas. Right. <laughs> and that's, you know what? While yeah, we're still, no idea. still sitting there with a fucking pad writing down ideas that I want to get done tomorrow. Yeah, and you, st- you, still, be, you still be industrious. You still be thinking what's next. Yeah. Because it comes from the inherent internal creativity. Right. And even like... It doesn't you, go away. How you talk about your workshop. Like, how inspired are you when you walk in in the morning and you flick the light on? Oh, I, I can't wait. I'm actually... You know, being a, a not a new father, but a um, growing family, um, it's hard because you wanna you wanna be there for them. Yeah. And you know you should be there for them, but you really want to get your own shit going too. Yeah. And yeah. and it's a, it's a fickle balance. And I think I'm getting through it. I have to ask Claire about that. But um, you get a second opinion. Yeah. Being bloody. <laughs> the other opinion that matters. How many hours have I logged up with the family? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Get logged back on the list again. Um, but yeah, uh, you were saying before about you were lucky, but I, I, I believe that you create your own luck a bit too. So if you don't put yourself in a position where that luck can come to you, then you'll never get it. The harder you work, the luckier you get. I, f- I think so. Definitely. And the luck can also be attributed to the lessons you learn. So you might, um, and they come from mistakes. There's nobody that was ever successful um, didn't make a mistake. Exactly. They all made lots of them. Yeah. Lots and lots yeah. of mistakes. Because you, you could read a book on something, write this, say, do it, da 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 da, and the minute you try and go and apply that, the world changes. No, it didn't account for this. Yeah, I didn't, didn't know that. That, that yeah. wasn't that wasn't in the book. Oh, what happens if or, we get caught here? Yeah, um, and that comes down to your own know, management and prioritisation, and and how you end up running a business or any venture, basically, whether it be whether it be um, monetised or not. But yeah, just having that um, constant drive. Um, well, I shouldn't say drive I should say belief that the mistakes will make you stronger like there shouldn't be any fear around making mistakes yeah yeah. but most people do yeah I fear if I if I quit my job and try this venture I might not make any money for three months that's where they stop yeah they'll yeah. never do it but it's, you know if they go through the whole life and they end up dying happy yeah can't ask much more than that but my version of happy I think is clearly different to most people. <laughs> That's right. And then you get like, I don't know about you, but I've found myself asking, am I subjectively someone who enjoys the thrill of, like, I enjoy danger. Mm. Like an hour ago, I was hanging off my back wheel trying to find fucking 12 o'clock on my push bike down the main street of town. I had, I had I was going to tell you before we started, I saw you go up the street that day. Yeah, fucking know. You had like plats or something and... and um, oh, with the corner crazy, crazy glass. Yeah, crazy <laughs> yeah. glasses. I was coming in the lights and I see this guy in his back wheel. I looked across and I thought, fuck, that's Jake. <laughs> I gave it to you, but you, you, you were just too... I was uh, in the zone, dude. Yeah, no, you had a set. You were going up the whole street. I was trying to watch in the mirrors for as long as I could, but I had to turn the corner. But, but yeah. that's, that's that's the thing. Like, that's the... That's the uh, what do you call it the the things that i look to do that sort of the sort of behavior that i that i seek yep. so i go okay i like a bit of i like a bit of thrill I like a bit of danger does that then go into okay i'm happy to throw myself into this business so like when i moved into here mm. i was 60 percent sure that we can come up with the rent i yep. had fail safes i had you know mom and dad are gonna look after me riz will look after me i'm 60 yep. percent sure yeah that's good odds for me yeah let's fucking do it absolutely we're doing it in a caravan and we in a market do- that you you're entering in too like it was, it was a bit dearer you, yeah. know, you know, so there's, there's a level of things you got to con- got to consider, and they could rock you. They could create a fear, and you might not do it. You chose to ignore that. Yeah, and, you st- and here you are, fine. I Hopefully think fine. Um, people don't realise that leap of faith. I always call it the leap of faith when people go from a safe zone in a job and start a business or start a venture that may not be have an income for a while because there's many versions of it out there. Yeah, um, that leap of faith is not fearing going under too soon or at all and do your best to make it work. I mean, these things come with a lot of unpaid work. Yeah. There's a lot of work that goes with it that's just unpaid and you have to accept that. But again, nobody who's ever been successful has said that they just took it easy and it worked out anyway. It, yeah, dude. It took, it took, you know, big days. I think also the people who do get it easy, the shit that the, the result they get, you don't actually want. Yeah, and, and of course life can give you different bum steers. But again, that's just reacting to um, trying it. You know, you might go down one one road and it comes to T junction, you have to go left or right. Yeah. There's no going on that on that on that same road. So you try a left, go down about two k's, and oh shit, that was wrong. Yeah. 
they'd be fine to drive the two k's back and go the other way. And also, don't be scared to take your time driving back either. Then mm. like, fuck now, I've got to go do it. Yeah, and okay, ta- cool. and take take it in. You know what? In three mm. years' time, you're going to be sitting at a bar thinking about it, going like, if I didn't turn left, I wouldn't have realised that my fucking front left hand tire was flat, and I would have end up driving over. And then mm. you realise, oh, okay, mm. this is a greater thing. This is a greater thing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think going back a conversation, talking about your family time, mm. again, the exact same as like the skill of learning is a muscle that you have to exercise. Yeah. The skill of being a good father, mm. of being a family man, of like someone who has time for your partner, for your child, for your pet, for your garden, that they're all muscles as well. Yeah. And I think one thing that does get overlooked, and it's easy to overlook, when you're doing 50 hours a week in a job that maybe you do or don't like, you know, it's easy to go like, hey, you need to get home and spend an hour finding out her, how her day was. Yeah. You need to find yeah. out what's going on in her life because she's yeah. just spent 10 or 8 hours with another group of people probably talking about stuff that has not... Mm. Like, that's important. Yeah, yeah. And right. that skill, who has that these days? Yeah, and I, I make a point of asking both Claire and my little girl, Ava, um, how the days were. But what we ask Ava is, what was your favourite thing today? Yeah. And I like they click on all that. And I thought, that's great. And she can't wait to tell us. Yeah. What was your favourite thing today? I had an ice cream. Yeah, hell yeah. Actually, that's a pretty cool thing to be be happy about you know be thankful for so yeah dude that's yeah. a that's a good um for her as well like i practice you know three grateful things a day when i pray every morning what's the three things I'm that's right for yeah today. you're saying yeah dude you know how hard that shit is after like after a month of doing it is nuts after a year it's like i'm grateful that i can with uh, like i'm pretty colorblind i'm super grateful i can see green and blue though yeah fuck i'm grateful you know mm, mm. it's like you only realize that after you've been grateful for your car and your life and your dog and your girlfriend and your tv yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so having that like implanted as a what, what 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 part about today did you like well i got to reflect I, there was probably something that stood out if there wasn't something that stood out i really have to reflect and i have to communicate it uh, and i think it's a good little tool because it had an effect on me too without even knowing it, was that you kind of get a, a level of what kind of life you got, you know, and that life is, is happy and that's all that matters is people are happy. In my book, there's, yeah. you know, the book on life, it just has 25 pages, you open it to the middle one and it just says happiness. Yeah. In whatever form that takes. Um, is that we are happy because we have these things that we're doing all the time and going places, doing this and that. And yeah, you know, a lot of it's experience based, you know, going to the beach, on the dinghy down or whatever it might be. And it just, it just sort of reaffirms that you're doing okay. Yeah. You know, you, you, you're bumming along just fine. I like the, uh, if you are, have you, do you know much about cold showers and ice plungers? And mm, I've, sort of seen it, I've seen a bit of it. I'm not sure I'll ever do it, but. <laughs> I like the idea of like, the one thing I go to in my head when I'm having a cold shower, which isn't that regularly, but there's like a, there's like a, a formula you can follow it's like the Wim Hof formula where you go hot cold hot cold hot cold and while you're in the part where it's cold you can be there for as long as you want mm. be there for 10 seconds or you can be there for two minutes yep. but the idea is while you're doing it you're holding your breath mm. so it's not just the cold attacking you it's your body then going like we also need breath and we're stressed so it increases the need for breath yeah and the idea is you're trying to get norepinephrine out of your brain organically oh. it's like a biohack right eh? but while you're there and you want to be quit, building the whole time wouldn't it that's right mm. that's right mm. While you're there with your hand on the on the fucking thing about to turn it back to hot again, like just think like, bro, this is literally the worst thing that's going to happen to you today. Yeah. Being cold. Yeah. There are people out there like, I'm not going to go back to the cliche, but there are people out there who don't have food. Yeah. yeah. There are people out there yeah. that fucking have things that they didn't ask for that they were born with are going to mean their life's going to end short. And you're bitching about wanting to take a breath and get into the warmth. Mm. Let's go. That's you know? right. Yeah. I mean, you can almost, you can almost in an analogy form, apply that to uh, how you go about doing uh, life or business, whatever, is that the cold could be sacrifice yeah. and the warmth is, is your reward. Yeah. Because a lot of the reward don't come without the sacrifice. Hey, boys, we're going to the pub on Friday night. We haven't been blinder. I could, but I really want to get this something or other going. Mm. I'm going to say no to that and bring about my going forward. Um, You'd be hating it because you're not down there having having a blast. Yeah, dude. But you could do that every Friday night, and that would then probably become detrimental to your your process 100%. and where you want to go, because um, you're robbing robbing your time. Yeah, and you're robbing your. Uh, You've only got so much time, and it's you best put it in the right place. <laughs> unfortunately, with drugs and alcohol as well, mm. and when fatigue comes into it, you're robbing your bandwidth. Mm. You yep. know, like my creative efforts after a fucking big weekend, just on the piss, is like. It's it's day and night. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if I operated like I did when I was 18, I would not run a business. I would not probably function. Yeah, so, yeah. So, um, given all the vices back then. But um, um, as you get older too, it's harder to do. Um, you know, doing tuna. We used to do, like I said, this used to be the tavern. This is where we used to have people over and get on the pierce and did that a lot. Yeah. And I was still quite industrious anyway, renovating the place, a yeah. couple, couple of places. <clears throat> And um, bring about you know something to rent out, and then that, that was part of the you know, the business side of life, you know. And um, but geez, we had some ball here and nights here. Yeah, but it'd be great, and that's 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 the fun side of life. That's what makes you happy. You know, you do that. And um, uh, yeah, as mates had babies, or I had babies, or um, you know other things creep into life that take a bit of your time. You start to prioritise a bit more. Yeah, you know, get on the piss. You know, we used to do it three, four, five times a week. Yeah, crazy. Especially my first shift at the Bunbury. But um, um, you kind of got to say, you know what, that's not really helping me much. Yeah. I want to bring the balance back to getting on with it, you know. I even found... Um, even, even just fitness. Let's just, you know, use fitness as an example. Yeah. You know, just, you know, I was podging up, being a machine operator, podging up. A point came with, geez, you might want to do something about your fitness a bit. I mean, I'm not, I'm not Superman now, but... I'm conscious of it. Yeah, 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 100%. And I think that... I need, I need to apply time for that too. Yeah, well, I think the trick is you incorporate it into the job, you know? Well, my well, the business was quite physical anyway. I got a lot of exercise just from lifting and pushing and jumping in and out and step aerobics and out of the truck and all that sort of stuff anyway. Yeah, I've been a truck driver thing. too. That's not incorporating the job. That's no. bullshit. That's <laughs> you kidding yourself. Yeah, You're doing right. exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got in and out of the truck like four yeah. times. Yeah, well, that's, that's about... Uh, half a mountain <laughs> yeah uh, yeah so yeah no you, you did but if i stopped doing that entirely i'd, I'd go backwards yeah so i even I'm fuck with like doing it. the i'm gonna do this and then i'm gonna fucking pump out 10 push-ups and like i go for a ride every day i try and do deliveries while i'm riding my push bike and shit but i definitely like i know that it's easy to like be an artist and a fucking bloke who makes t-shirts to very quickly lose this you know aesthetic you know mm. so i'm very fucking aware of that if, if i could have um, a different track in life. I love to follow my artistic side of my life a bit more uh, actively because the problem with, with that is that there's next to no money yeah. <laughs> in being an artist. You have to be a recognised artist. Recognised artists are recognised because they've done all that back work. Yeah. All that stuff for free and they've you know, spent their yeah, lives indeed. dedicated to it. But I often wonder why, what my life would look like. What, would I have a big studio? Would I, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. the same effort and money I've spent doing what I've done now, what would that look like? Yeah. And just let my mind go nuts with just creating stuff. How interesting Whether it's sold is that? or otherwise, you know, just, just make it. I think there's a truth in you that you know that if you had a, exactly what you said, applied that ability to learn, let's say, oil, and, oil on canvas, yeah. you know, like I, like I know if I had done that, I would have been amazing at it. Mm. Like I'm not trying to be mediocre at anything. Yeah. I'm doing wheelies, making shirts, social media. Yep. I'm trying to be the best at whatever to, I'm doing. doing and if that death. just happened to be tattooing, or if that just happened to be pencil on paper, I'd yep. be the fucking man. Yeah, that's you know? right. Yeah, and and I I I, I um, have a, um, a degree of um, off a of detail and a standard I like. Yeah. Um, and people think I will waste my time a bit because I try and do it. You know, it's like the efficiency triangle. You know, you can do so much effort for reward. Time taken, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, I tend to do a bit more on this side, which is quality. Yeah. When I could probably got ninety percent to that quality, but save myself forty percent time, <clears throat> and made a bit more money. You know, just yeah, yeah. I, I always seem to hang on, but that's my personality trait. And a pace to know you, know yourself too. You need to do these things like, like I said before, risk taking. I'm a bit of a risk taker too. Like I'm not too frightened to take a risk. Yeah. I'm not completely risk adverse. Like I don't, I don't just go balk totally at risk. Yep. Shit like that. So. Yeah, I think there is like, I mean, you want to spend half of your life figuring out what your character traits are, and the other half monetizing them. Most people can't tell you who they are. Right. Right. Most people don't know. Like they say they're a risk taker, and it's like, what do you do that's risky? And they go, oh well, I um, um, you don't even fuck without a condom, bro. You're not risky. Yeah, yeah. You're a risky man's <laughs> asshole. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's right. You know, but I think like one, like if you're a meticulous person, get into a meticulous trade, be a jeweler, yeah. but be a, be a, a fucking biohazard cleaner where you need to get absolutely everything out. You know, like yep. if you know that about yourself, then monetize around it. 
Like, exactly, that's the key. And that's why a lot of people, I, I learned this only recently, actually. Somebody said to me, well, describe yourself to you. I said, well, I'm five foot eight. No, 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 no. I've got brown hair. No, 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 no. Who are you? Yeah. Describe who you are. Yeah. And what do you mean? It's a hard question. And, but when you get a few clues, like, okay, what do you, what we're trying to get to is probably what are your personality traits? Yeah. You know, I can tell you I'm a contrarian, a risk taker. I can be greedy. I can try and control that side of my personality. So when it comes to doing things in life, I'm going to hang on. Don't be greedy, dickhead. Yeah. So I'll pull back a bit on that. Uh, I'll do a little bit of risk. And um, I like what you're saying, but I'm going to do the opposite. Yeah, yeah. So you know yourself, which means it, it gives you a bit of a path. Because a lot of people don't, if they can't describe themselves, they don't, they'll pick a, a thousand paths and may never get there because they're, they're just none. test and tries or pick none. You know? Yeah. I think one thing I find as well, a lot of people, beside character traits, you go, what do you enjoy doing? And they're like, oh, well, you know, when I was a kid, I used to do tennis or, you know, I, I wouldn't mind doing this. But the one thing, you know, that I like doing is like, I like scrolling. I like being on TikTok. I like being on this or that. Yep. And I think like, it's so easy for me to get passionate about doing black ink if the result means I can ride my motorbike more. And I know I love riding motorbikes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So when you, when you've like, and this is the thing, like I'd. I like riding motorbikes because I guess it's not even that I probably loved doing it as a kid, but I've now been doing it so long that I'm so good at it that I get a good feeling from doing it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's um, like any skill set. If you're really good at something, and people will give you kudos for that too. That's right. Fuck, how do you do that? Yeah. Well, the whole story is I've practiced a lot and I really love it. Yeah, and it's been 10 and years. There, and it's been 10 years, so there's, there's your formula. Yeah, and I think, like, this is the thing. It's hard to... Let's talk about the cycle of like the Monday to Friday, the average job, doing the thing. Maybe you're in a relationship, maybe you've got a couple of whatever. Uh, it's really hard to want to break that cycle if you get most of your happiness from the little brief moments of happiness you get with your workmates. Yep. You know, if you've got nothing that you do on Thursday, every Thursday night I go down to indoor beach, indoor beach volleyball, I get on a team with fucking strangers and I play not to win, not to lose, but to play. Mm. If you got yep. that and you go, okay, well, what if I said you could play volleyball every day? What if we build a YouTube channel around your volleyball and you talk and you commentating volleyball and we do that for six months until you get a voice, you can quit your job, whatever it is. And they go, that'd be fucking amazing. Well, that's easy because you've got something that you want to go do. But these average people, and I say that not in a bad way. No, no. Just, these average people, yeah. they have no fucking idea what they like. Yeah. I remember the system, that's a direct byproduct of the system too because people, the, the, the government, if you like, wants you to fit a band with, within society. There are right. people who drop out of it, so there's people who are um, on the dole and that sort of stuff, and you've got people who are rich. Right. And most of us are in that middle, middle, middle 80%. Yeah. But that makes the world go around too, you know, helps um, society in a lot of ways. But there are people who find it too hard, so they'll drop out of it, and if they're happy, that's fine, I suppose. Yeah. And then there are people who, who I find myself, and I think you're the same, but just want to just get above it a bit. We might, yeah. aim, we might aim for 110%, which is not even a thing, but if it's 110% you're aiming for, but you hit 92, well, you're 12% above the 80%. Well, you know? fuck yeah, and and that, that, that little bit... is huge. ...affords you a lot of freedom and fun and, and life. Mm. I don't know about you, but I'm working flat out to stop working one day so I can do the things I love to do. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. I've been saying that for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> but have I got there yet? No. And I think the but idea will I get there before most other people? Probably, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I think also uh, there's a lot of truth in like, and this is a thing we can't say because we're not old enough yet, but you'll probably find that after 60 years, you look back and you go, it was the pursuit. It, it wasn't the goal. It was the pursuit. Yeah, I, I hear that a lot. You know, it's, not, it's not the destination, it's the journey. Well, if it wasn't for the destination, you wouldn't be on that journey. We have no direction. <laughs> you have no direction. The goal is very important. And a goal... Um, can be pie in the sky and it's okay if you miss it yeah it is actually okay if you miss it because if you miss it, miss that by a little bit you're still doing better than what you were saying before you're still a bit above yeah if you didn't make the effort yeah if you didn't take the action you know i've found so far and i might have just had a good run but everything i ask for i get yeah if you ask for it you'll get it yeah but a lot of a lot of the not getting it comes from like oh i better not i had it this morning you know i'm doing a calendar at the moment and for next year, and I've got all these great images, I've got this thing that I know that people are gonna fuck with, I know people are gonna buy this, and I know people are gonna put it up in their rooms, in their kitchens, in their workplace. Yep. I know that's gonna happen. Yeah. So I've got a section down the bottom of each month that's gonna display six businesses. Every month, okay. the, the business is displayed. Yep. So I thought, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get these 
you know, advertising positions. I'm going to charge 250 bucks for a position and that right. gets your name displayed 12 times. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what month it is, you're displayed next to Black Ink and alongside five other businesses. And you're providing exposure. Right. Mm. And when I sit down and I talk to myself about it or I tell you or I tell Riz and I'm discussing it, I'm like, this is actually fucking crazy advertising potential mm. because the brand that I'm building people listen to yep. i am in people's face every day with a different message yep. going in the some kind of direction yep. right and i ask myself like well don't worry about who you know you can get to pay 250 dollars. worry about the businesses that you want on that calendar yeah exactly right and there was just one business and for the sake of them i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say who it is but i thought i really want that business kind of in the center of every month yeah it's called top-down thinking so you've got your big picture yeah and you put the layers in it yeah 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 <clears throat> A lot of people look at details and build and then realize the big, big picture wasn't what they wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll let the end result go. work back. Yeah. yeah, reverse engineer what you actually want. Yeah. But point or, being, or same, you know, destination. you got your destination or your goal. Well, your journey is your reverse engineering. It's, it's well, how, do I, how do I achieve yeah. it? Yeah. You yeah. figure out what steps I need to take every year, every month, every day, right down to yeah. every fucking hour of the day. Right. I need to be reading a chapter of a book a day if I'm going to be this much intellectually smarter to understand this subject, to do this, yep. whatever it might be. Yep. Now, point being today with what I was talking about, I went to this to this business, even holding my breath because I rode on my push bike there and I'm like, oh, fucking, what am I doing here? And I go and like, how are you going? I'm like, oh, here it goes. And I asked. Yeah. And they said yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they said yes. And it's like, what the fuck were you worried about? Yeah. You're going in there. Yeah. You know it's valuable yeah. for both of you. There yeah. is nothing you have to be embarrassed about asking, but it's this idea exactly right. yeah. that no. Always know? put it out there. Always yeah. put it out there. Because you know what? You might just get that, that person on that day who may have had the same thought as you, but they haven't got the time or the money or the inclination to do something. Yep. But you'll stand in front of them and just going to do it. So they'll jump on with you. Yeah, or I'll, I'll give you a bit of help yep. or provide something or give something for free or use this to bring about that goal and they feel they're a part of it. Right. They run their life, but they want to... Have, might have ideas and it happens you know to coincide with yours and yep. they'll talk to you and keep an eye on it and, Dude, passions and, get, and drive some happy, happiness out of it because they feel like they've, they're involved you know that's right without being directly involved sometimes especially if you rock up with energy and they've had yeah. it, they've had that like oh I wouldn't mind and now they're like oh he's got the he's got that push he's going to do this if I do it or not yeah I want to be involved yeah you know exactly right and I know that's true because that's how I respond to people with passion I'm like look at this guy yep fucking where do I sign up yeah exactly right you know yeah. and uh, I um. I can't wait for what's going to happen in the next next few months because I don't really know where, where it's going to go because, um, you know, I'm going to be joining the online space with the yeah. shop and things that I make. So there's a bit of risk involved in that. And I think um, I've got a lot of ideas. So so my approach when I was still operating the, the previous business is when I had an idea, I wrote it down. Right. I've got a terrible memory. Yeah. But the smarts was, when somebody said one day, just write it down. Yeah. Just write it down. You might not ever use it. Just write it down. Yep. And now I've got six, on the old iPhone, I've got six pages it's just of ideas. ideas. Yeah. So I actually can't wait to just go, right, first Which, first idea, sh you know, do a few castings because it's a casting-based business. Yep. And put a handful out there. They sell. Great. Not so much. Well, melt them down. Just make something else. Right. So I've got a bit of process in that idea but around the new business. I think but, you've got but, a, um, a really good business to just experiment as much as possible. And it taps into my creative side. Yeah. Yeah. So I was saying before about how, you know, what my life would look like if I'd put all the effort into you know, the earth moving business or working for other people, whatever it was, into into the studio and what I could have been. Well, I'm kind of robbing a bit of that idea. Yeah, in a, in yeah, a different yeah. Thing. So, but same before, the old T-junction analogy. Yeah. Left or right? Well, I went left and I tried that for 14 years. Yeah. And it worked out to be harder than I thought. But I still did it right. It afforded me a nice lifestyle. I want to do a bit better, yeah, and 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 have less cost and and more profit margin and and just all those things you learn a lot the way. So I decided to come back to the T junction and turn right. And also the creativity aspect of it, I think like I for the longest time I'm like I'm not a creator, I'm not an artist. And then when you realise you're in a space where it's like oh I'm monetizing being creative, and then all of a sudden that flower opens and you're like I'm a fucking creator. Mm. I don't. There's no way I want to drive trucks again. No. There's no way I want to. Uh, I'll do it if I had to, but I don't want to either. Yeah. Oh, I'm actively trying to forget even how to spell synchromesh because I don't want to know how that fucking gearbox works, dude. Dude, 
What's the point? Like, this is one of those situations where you burn <laughs> like, the bridge like and you that. can't That's go back. <laughs> if you burn the bridge, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, the dudes that I used to work for, like, when they call me up, I'm like, you can't do a, a bloody... Still, still, I get these calls. I'm, I'm getting the same phone calls. You yeah. do a weekend, couple of night shifts, it's like, fucking, you're a dickhead and hang up so they don't call me back. Because mm. mm. if they do, you're just as likely to say yes when you reach that moment of... And as much as we're helpful people, all you're really doing is helping them make their dollar. That's right. Again, nothing wrong with that. But that's the true analysis of it. Yeah. So, I mean, some people have had to keep quiet about my, my plans because I just know what their their mentality is and that's that safe. No, no, go work for somebody, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, you, wrong time of life to be doing this, mate. And, you know, or you, you'll go backwards or you'll go bankrupt and you yeah. get a lot of negative input. And this is from people who don't know any fucking better. Yeah. It's just how they operate. They never tried to go out of business. They never tried to do, you know, know what it's like to put your own money on the line. Yeah. Whether it comes back or not, but you spend it. This sort of stuff. They don't know that. So why would I take my advice from them? And they like spending, uh, these are the people who rock up in a car that they own a third of. Mm. And they got on tick. Yep. It's like, you know, go for the safe option. It's like, bro, I don't, what? Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. What do you mean go for the safe? Hey, do you own your house? Shut the fuck up, you yeah. know? Yeah. Another life lesson I learned was if you want to be successful... Don't talk to your fan, friends or family. Yeah. Not to say they might be successful in their own right, but get your information from a different circle. Get yeah. out of that circle, and then you open your eyes to the rest of the world, how things work, and then you start to cotton on to um, commonalities and best practice. Yeah. And you're taken off quicker than you would if you were to take your advice from people who come from a space of fear. Yeah. Or worry or whatever. Because I, I can't, Imagine how many people have been held back because they've put their faith in their in their advice from their best mate, who's never done it, or understand, or a father or a mother, whoever. I just wonder how many people have missed out. Yeah, dude. Yeah, and I mean, what they say, ninety percent of small businesses fail in the first two years. It's because yep. they're listening to shit like that. Yeah. You yep. know, it's yep. because they weren't prepared enough to start. Yeah, mm. or weren't resilient enough. Something happened and they got down to zero or negative zero and they're, oh, now I've got to fucking go drive a truck to pay this back. Dude, just, you're at zero now. It's yeah. fine. And I'm, you know, I'm going to emphasize that, you know, being happy is still, is still the, the highest power. Because um, um, I, don't, I don't want to knock anybody in society because everybody does it their own way and as long as they're happy, that's all that really matters. And I always sort of reiterate that when I talk to people because... Um, Ultimately, that's what it matters when you yeah. take your last breath. You know, you know what? I had a good life, and if you're happy with that life, that's what should hopefully be your mentality. But um, I, I just want to, I just want to see where I end up. I mean, I could, I could be doing aircraft mechanics for all I know when I'm seventy. I don't know. Yeah. But if that's what I'm happy doing, and it's completely opposite to what I'm saying now, yeah, that's that's what really matters. Yeah. But I, I have a plan. I want to stick to it, and no, plans only work if you stick to them. And I want to I want to get to a space that makes me really happy and affords you a lot more time in life. Yeah. Also, I think um, it's funny like that. Oh yeah, this probably uh, applies to a few things we've spoken about. Like, people are allowed to progress. People are allowed to get better at things. People are allowed to be at one stage and go to another stage in their life. Yep. And I think it's really important that you remember that when dealing with other people, mm. when dealing with yourself. And like, especially when you're reflecting and you're looking at things you're like, why did I do this that way? Why did I do that? So because I was progressing, I was getting better. Mm. And I think tying into like making sure, just talking to family and friends is really scary, mm. you know? Because sometimes, family, yeah. you know, you know, like especially for me, I say to dad, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about doing that. And he goes, oh yeah? And you're like, oh fuck, he's not on board. I wonder if I need to go and re revisit all this. And it's like, I'm the one who has all the data. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking him for a fucking yeah. opinion. I'm yeah. telling him what I'm doing. Yeah. And now I've been rocked in this way. And then you ask him six weeks later and he's like, oh no, I was smoking a cigarette and I just didn't have time to respond properly. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. fucking what? <laughs> you know, like, what do you mean? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah. I, I find that like, part of my progression has been understanding that like, I've got a group of, like a group of mentors yep. and every one of them have a very specific niche that they are good at helping me with. Yep. Dad's exactly. a strateg strategist. He helps me na yes. navigate through and out of things. He's been helpful to me too, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. Now I've got people who I talked about finance. I've got people who I talked about design work. I've mm. got people who I talked to about X, Y, and Z. Yep. And it's like understanding that like you might have a friend who is extremely good at helping you with one small part of your business. Yep. Outside of that small part, listen to what he has to say, but don't take it on board. And that's yeah. fine. Yeah, that's right. You know? Um, 
the best advice I've got about advice is that advice comes from many sources. Yeah. It's up to you to what advice you pick up. Right. So you want to ask about growing the hibiscuses. Yeah. Never done it before, no idea. But you'll talk to 10 horticulturalists and they will give you their best formula to grow that hibiscus. But you think number three was the best one for you. Yep. And that's what you go with. Right. A lot of people, for some reason, think their advice is the only advice. That's not how advice works. No. <laughs> that's my character shit, eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've, I've learned that one over the years too. Because you can literally put your faith in one advice. They never did it, so never tried and tested it. You do it, you try and test it, and it didn't work. When you should probably listen to a bit more advice or got a bit more information or research, however you want to put it, yep. to pick your path. And it's like a lot of things in life. It's got to suit you to do what you're doing. Right. Because some you could write, you know, say a share trader or something. They could say, well, this is how you do it, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, whatever it might be. If you did that exactly, you'll make a million dollars. Yeah. You give that same bit of advice to 10 people. Yeah. Probably only one, maybe not even one, yeah. will actually make a dollar because that formula doesn't suit their personality, who they are, yeah. how they operate. Yeah, how they emotionally respond yeah. to things, X, Y, Z. Yeah. So it's a bit of a minefield, I know, but you know, I'm not the expert on, on the subject, but that's what I've, I've sort of taken on board over, over the years. Yeah. I like the, uh, I don't know. You're doing something similar with, with this, you know, you're looking around and you're trying and, you know, and things like networking too. So that's the other opposite to what I was saying before about taking advice from the wrong people is that once you do find a commonality with people who do know what they're doing yep. and are successful at what they're doing, then you build your, you build your group around that. Because you're comfortable with these people do it every day. They know what they're doing. They demonstrate that they know what they're doing. Yep. Because you can, lip service is one thing. Demonstration, demonstration yeah, is another. results are a big thing. And results are another. And that's where you, that, if, that's where, if that's where you want to go to, 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 you know, get to where you want to be a bit quicker, that's what you got to do. Yeah. And I'm doing that now at 46 of eight, years of age, a better top topic I don't know a lot about. So that's why I'm saying it really, because I'm, I'm doing, I'm actively doing that now. I think, yeah, I don't know. They're like, again, that's some of that programming coming in where it's like, oh, I'm this age, so I'm meant to respond like this. Like, I don't know, because I haven't experienced my 30s, I haven't experienced my mm -hmm. 40s. Mm -hmm. But if I was say, like, I would guess you going into this situation, you've got a lot more instances where you've learned a new skill from zero. Oh, yeah. So learning this new skill from zero at this age, it's like, oh, I've got the ability to learn really quickly because I've learned really quickly. Mm. Like, I understand everyone else around me who's given me advice has learned three new skills in the past 40 years. Yeah, yeah. So I get it. That's scary for you. But, mm. what, like, so, yeah, I, I, I just find that, like, the age thing should only be like, well, I've got wisdom on my side. I might have a little bit less energy, might have a little bit less flexibility. Yeah, I, you think, you're, I think you're a bit wiser among your years, but that also come from your dad as well. He's very clued up. People around you are quite clued up. And you're able to say, like I say, pick those snippets of good advice out of the advice that you get and put it together for yourself. Yeah, dude. My uh, coach in speed skating gave me a really good analogy that stuck with me because speed skating is the most weird um like physically the technique is mm. so unhuman mm. it's not normal you have yep. to do things with your body that don't make sense yep so you can watch 10 skaters who all skate differently and, and who all are world champions in their own respect yep. but they all skate completely differently mm. he goes your job as a skater is to skate with each of each of these people ask questions get advice and then build your technique using the hundred different pieces of, of advice you've got to yeah. make your advice yeah yeah and like i've taken that into fucking everything man yeah you and know? then what what happens is as as you get older and people ask you about certain things they're getting my little bit given your you giving your advice right and this is the circle of advice that i was talking about is that you have to give that advice knowing that they may not use it yeah well they may take and that's it, okay they might take it and absor uh, absorb it differently to what you're saying and translate it into something else it just might not suit them yeah that's that's all it is i see people get angry i told him how to do that i showed him how to do that that's okay and he, you're, you're probably right but he just chose not to take it dude they get, I get it so angsty because I, I told him yeah you have to let go of that man because that well, that comes down to how how successful they're going to be in whatever field they cho choose or they're trying to learn about now they might bump along middle of the road for the rest of their lives and be happy with it oh dude they, they, might, they might go a couple of above it because they did take your, your advice on and, and went wow I'm glad I learned yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's a fickle it's a fickle buddy formula Dude, I mean, in that situation as well, like you have to, 
remind yourself as being an artist what you like you're only in control of 50 percent of what goes out there the other 50 percent is the interpretation yeah, you're at the mercy of what you, who you, or you're trying to put it to yeah which is mm. absolutely fucking debilitating when you think about it sometimes you're like i can make the best boss i can make the best t-shirt in the world mm. and people can still think i'm a fuckhead just because they like saw me and they were having a bad day and they don't like the shirt because mm. it, because they're having a bad day. Is that right? You know, it's like, man, okay, yeah. cool. That yeah. just means I have to make heaps of good stuff in my. Oh, it just means I have to stay true, true to me, really. Yeah. That's I mean, what they, and I, I'm I'm a, I'm no less a victim to this, and that is opinion is so much more out in life now because of the outlets that provide a stream for it. So all your social media is bigger. And it has an effect on society, I think, because people put so much faith in what the fucking telephone tells them. Yeah. Instead of just do a bit of your own research, block that out, do your own research, pick your path, get your advice, and just try it. Because you can you can have all the theory in the world, that means nothing unless you take action. Yeah. <clears throat> it's that step of taking action is when the learning curve really starts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the school of hard knocks, man. Um, I did... Um, Goji Kai karate for years when I was a kid and I remember going up and you, know, you just want to get your black belt you want to get your black belt achieve that and then my sensei said to me he goes right now your your um, learning curve starts I said yeah. what I just spent eight years or seven years yeah. getting the black belt we went this is my ticket to learn it blew my mind blew my mind because I didn't know that after black belt there's ten dance yeah, yeah, and yeah. there's sections of the dance so it's kind and, of like that's just it involves foundation. trips to Japan and it, it just pfft, I thought I knew it all yeah that was that was a real good eye opener for me yeah I feel like anything that uh, that's worth learning you get to a point where the more, the better I get at wheelies the more I realise I'm so far away from knowing how to do a good wheelie yeah you know yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like oh you can get proficient and go around corners or tip them back or hitting 12 or brake control it's like yeah try doing a hand drag yeah Try doing a, a fucking stop foot down 360 and right out of it. Tried to take it. That's a real combination of, of, of dude body skills and everything. It is, isn't it? Yeah. You know? And like my end goal is to be able to do that on a Harley. I'm only doing this yeah. on a push bike to Can't get good on the ground. Oh, bro. Yeah. Gets me fucking half hard thinking yeah, about it. I, know. I love it. That's all I want to do. I want to get yeah. the Harley now, so I've got it ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go shopping. But dude, going back to what we're talking about before, I love this. I don't know the exact analogy, but it was along the lines of like, uh, Albert Einstein was asked uh, if we give you a problem and we gave you four hours to solve it how would you solve it whatever the problem is he goes well yeah. I'd spend three three hours 45 minutes thinking about what I'm going to do and then 15 minutes executing it Yeah, I think yeah. about that all the time Yeah, you know and that, you can sort of you apply that to um, what I was saying before about advice and, and research and that you do, you're doing that for the three hours 45 three, what did you say three yeah. hours 45 minutes the 90% sort of thing but if you didn't do anything in that last 15 minutes what was the last three hours 45 about dude yeah you, I why, guess. why put you through that effort and, and 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 you know to bring about a decision and then not apply that decision yeah a lot of people do it heaps of people do it yeah I think I think the truth is like, the same people that provide the lip service to yeah yeah and the thing I find is like sometimes when you ask these people like well, we'll just talk about the problem what is the problem well if you talk to a 18 to 25 year old female the problem is finding a guy to get pregnant with mm. you know it's like I'm putting all of this they have their own pressures that's yeah. right yep. you know I'm trying to do this this and this I'm trying to achieve this this and this in life and then it's like whoa 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 you don't know who you are I spent the first 25 years trying to avoid that <laughs> yeah dude yeah I'm but fucking, yeah I got ready for it eventually but yeah I'm seven years deep on a vasectomy, bro. I fucking... That's pretty ballsy. I turn right instead of left, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, that surprised me when you told me that all those years ago. I thought, fuck, that's... I you know it's a joke. It's ballsy. But, um, you know, big decision for a young fella. Yeah. I'm, but yeah. yeah, again, you know, you knew you could reverse it. You know, it was a 90% decision at the time. You thought it was 100%. Life goes on a bit. Lefts and rights. Oh, look, and I'm fully and in now you change now. Your and that's okay. You've got, it, wasn't, it wasn't a complete, you know... And all. Also, though, like, that's the sort of bloke who ends up running black ink. Mm. You know, like, that's, you know, it is it is risky. It, dude, it's risky to fucking lay there awake and have, you know, three nurses and a doctor cutting your bag open and yeah, doing I'm, the I'm, thing. I'm due in the next few weeks, so can't wait. Oh, dude, yeah. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's you and not me, you know. <laughs> but I ain't going back. Yeah. But, yeah, I think, like, that's a great representation of, like, without sounding like I'm bragging about it, like, that's... That's like doing it. That's doing the thing. Like, okay, I don't want to have kids. Fucking here's yep. how much I'm serious about that situation. Oh, maybe you're telling yeah. me. And I'm thinking, you know what? It's got a bit half a point there. You know, the world the world is, is um, you know, there's 
there's a lot of bad in it. Uh, I guess you have to sort of put your blinkers on, blinkers on to it because you haven't got another choice and get on with it and just go about life anyway. But yeah. Uh, the bad At the time thing. you told me about it, it was, that was your consideration. It's like, fuck, who wants to be getting into this crap? I think also though, like when I asked myself, like, do you want to be a father? The answer was no, because I didn't know. Mm. The answer wasn't no, because the answer was like, well, fuck me. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Yep. And now that I've had like, I'm, as I said, I'm almost 30. I've had some real good time to think about. It, and I've also had time to think about it in the middle of doing shit that I enjoy doing. Mm. Because if you're in the middle, like if you're in your second or third year driving a truck, and you're in the eighth hour of the day and you're, you're fucking you're the third out of four days that you're doing, then you go into nights. It doesn't matter what you think about, you fucking hate it. Yeah. You can think right. about your misses and it's in a negative light because mm. you're doing shit that deep down subconsciously you don't like doing. Yeah. So I've thought about it. I've had this experience of having Lily and now I've got this like better idea of like what a family is and what it means. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? Mm. I want to do that so bad. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to do it yeah. with time. I want to do it with freedom. I want to do it with the right finance. I want to do it so Riz can be with me and we can be do it as a family. Yep. And it's like, now I'm in a position where you ask me and I can give you a confident Probably. Yeah. You know? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly right. But back then... And, I mean, that, and that'll evolve too. That's right. That's right. And and so I mean, there's nothing I noticed. You know, what you thought you are going to do does change, but age provides perspective to what you're doing at that age too. Right. So, because right. you learn a few lessons and stuff. But I... Um, my dad passed away five years ago in December now, and he would say, Anthony do this and do that and, and you do the opposite because you're a young fella and yeah, you're to. genetically encoded to do the opposite anyway. But there came a point when I was about 24 and, I, and uh, he said to me, um, Anthony, when you start doing something decent with your money, mm. you know, I was buying sets of tyres from doing skids every weekend had to. and buying beers and everything else and chasing girls and all that sort of stuff and it took up your whole pay packet every week Yeah. and he was like, oh, you've been doing it for quite a few years now since you left school. When are you... Because he used the word decent. I thought, fuck you. I'll, I'll show you what decent is. And yeah. we bought my first house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't know that he already knew that if he tricked me, I'd do what he wanted. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There's and then, and then, and then there came a point where I went, fuck, maybe I should start listening to him. Yeah. He's done all this before me. Maybe I should. And I did. I still did the opposite things here and there, which is just, you know, different interests. But for the most part, um, I learned that from about 24, 25, that... Oh, what are you talking about that, Dad? And you'd listen. Yeah. Because before you go, ah, fuck no, Dad, you know what you're talking about. I think... And it's just, it's just masculinity. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah, full of masculinity course, when, you're, yeah. when you're a young fella. And then, <laughs> so, he's, yeah. Stop kicking him, Louie. Fuck. You, she's pushing me across. <laughs> yeah, come on, this is my couch. What are you doing? Bit more roomy. You might be the landlord. I'm the fucking yeah. boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll go with the, on the bloody... I don't know, surely. She does this every time. As soon as the podcast starts, she gets comfortable and then just starts kicking people. Yeah, notice, noticing that, that she always gets a pet, though. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think there's um, the change, the pivotal moment is when it goes from your dad telling you something to you asking him. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it flips to that. Yeah. So it's like, hey, dad, I'm in this situation. Because he's watching you going, we're doing that for you, idiot. We're doing that for you, idiot. And you're not an idiot. And then one day you go, click. Oh, I was kind of a bit of an idiot. All right. It's funny, you know. And it's like, hard, to, hard to admit it, but you kind of do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, and like, you know, even just talking about that and our, uh, that situation before where, you know, obviously when I was in my early 20s, I'm like, fuck every chick. I'm not having a kid. You know, like you're not getting my shit. Rah, yeah, rah. Yeah. And now it's like I probably, like I found the chick. I've got the environment. I've got the business. I'm like, oh, probably. Hmm. And that's because you're allowed to progress. Yeah. You're allowed to get better and grow and change. Yeah. You know? And I think that ties into that, like, I'm at a point now where, like, I've still got a bit of ego. I've still got a bit of, like, you know, dickheadness tied up in me. I know that. I'll grow mm. out of it. Yeah. But Comes back to knowing yourself. That's right. But I'm, I am now in a position where, like, I'm looking for those things where I can be embarrassed about myself from yeah. ages ago because you go, that's your building block. Yeah. That's the thing yeah. where I'm like, oh, I was so stupid to think this. You yeah. know, like, of course, yeah. a 350Z isn't a good investment. <laughs> and I wrote it off. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah, it's, it's fucking, it's funny actually because like, I feel like with my dad, I'm so lucky. He's such a fucking smart guy in so many ways. And that's why I've listened to him over the years too. I mean, more so, in particular with earthworks and running trucks and stuff, he's invaluable. Yeah. And, and you know what it comes from? Just being there and doing the thing over and Experience. over and over. Yeah. You know, it's like the, the dad analogy, like the older fellas have been there, done it. Yep. So... Don't be fond to ask questions, but if they offer offer advice because they can see you're going down an obviously wrong path, yeah, just at least stop and think about it for a second. 
Yeah, it's it's funny, you know. I don't know. Again, you don't have to do what they say. But I'm just saying, just maybe just give it some thought. Yeah, or even just give yourself another day to sleep on it mm. with this new consideration. That's right. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find with that at the moment though, I'm in a bit of a little bit of a crossroads with um, what's going on with Black Ink. I'll tell you a bit off camera, but yep, I've been faced with this situation where I'm like, you know, here's what's happened. Here's how I'm dealing with it. Yep. And telling Dad what I'm gonna do digitally with my business is like communicating to a goldfish with yep. sign language. Yeah, yeah You yeah. know, it's like, oh, I see you're doing something, yeah. but I have no fucking idea what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. when I ask him, he, he often tells me a very gray, yeah, very, yeah, gray yeah. version of what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you could but, probably tell him a bit but more. But he, he isn't gonna focus any of his energy on it. He's got his own way. Yeah. He's, he's set up, he's fine. And, you know, he could pull the pin today and, and the rest of his life happy as and doesn't need to take on these things that, you, that we're talking about because yeah. it serves him no purpose. No purpose whatsoever. Yeah. You know, he's happy just to call me and be like, the Wi-Fi dropped out again. What do I need to do? It's like the password on the fridge. <laughs> Put the fucking part and press enter. Like, wrote it down. On the why board. is it popping up as dots? Because it hides it fucking... <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. He's one less... I feel like I'm better than that when it comes to computers, but yeah, yeah exactly right. What's... Um, change the subject... Is there any future for racing motor vehicles for you? For me, uh, I haven't raced autocross for five years. Yeah. But that was a bit of a direct result of Dad passing away. I've been getting really ill and, and passing away. But um, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, we've got great facilities around Bunbury with Collie Motorplex and, and a bit further up at Quinana and, and there's a lot of programs. A lot of it's cheap enough to enter. Yeah. Um, it's only, you know, base level racing. It's not, it's not team style or professional style racing, but fuck, it's fun. I'd love to do it more. Well, I just put, um, uh, 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 this was a deal with the missus when I bought another car to sell a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and that's, you know, the same before about the family and what makes you happy and that sort of stuff. And it's, you know, I don't want my backyard to look like a wrecking yard, you know, that sort of stuff. Come yeah. Clear. <laughs> yeah. That's fair enough. And, and you, can't, you can't keep, you have to compromise, I guess. So I put the race car up for sale. And it, wow. And it's not selling, so don't deal clear. Yeah, right. I have to keep it. It's like... <laughs> Why is it not selling? I don't know. Someone put twice the value on it, and I just—it's. I guess it's overpriced. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's not worth eight grand. <laughs> Must edit that bit out for clear. Right. Yeah. No. Um. Uh. Yeah. Love it. But I'm, I've. Like we used to be right into um competition four wheel drive with a friend of mine in, in management, Paulie, and um we did that for years. Did it successfully enough. And um. Yeah, I still believe there's only one sport, and that's motorsport. Yeah. Um. And we'd love to do more, but it's costly, and and um, even at a base level, it's, it's you know, like any hobby, you have to throw money at it. But uh, with the family, my compromise is I'd just rather do it on the street cars. So that's one of my passions is doing the street cars. I've, yeah. I've narrowed down to the three I'm going to keep. Yep. And over the years, I'll just, when I go in the shed, I've got something to do, and yeah, buddy, oh. makes me happy as. I remember because we've actually known each other for like a long time, like it may be like in the ballpark of like 10, 15 years. Uh, yeah, because I would have met you shortly after I met Scotty, so um, I drove with him, so 14 years, 18 months, 16 years ago. Right. And I would have driven with him for two years prior to that, so yeah, 18 years I've known Scotty. Right. Yeah. So then... So you, you would have been, been the first year of coming around to have a drink and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So probably there, somewhere there. I remember, like, this is fucking, after I came back from Europe, so somewhere between 18 and like... 21 or something Hang on, that's right you were away for a bit first yeah that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, i lived yeah. in holland for a year and i came back and started working for lowtown pretty much straight away yes yep and right. tyler, i remember tyler robertson coming in one one well that was post driving at josh so yeah no, probably let's call it 15 years yeah yeah remember tyler no, I robertson you were away in. for a while yeah 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 you were driving that dual cab hilux i think yep with fucking everything on the under the sun on it yep and uh, I remember Tyler came to work one day. He's like, "Man, you should have fucking <laughs> seen two dads on the weekend. He fucking <laughs> did this massive jump when he's landed. It's fucking blown out of the drive shaft. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> fucking car broke in half, bro." <laughs> I still drove it for twenty years. Oh fucking hell! <laughs> I just sold it last week to to my, my brother-in-law. Yeah, fucking hell. So it stays in the fair. Oh yeah, because you're still driving a uh, that cruiser that Dad sold. I bought off your dad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy. Great old, great old rig. I'll do that up because strangely. And without knowing it, old cars became valuable, valuable yeah. again. I know. My, my it was never, it was never my. It wasn't an investment plan. Although I've got investment plans, but I, that wasn't one of them. Yeah. It's just a happy accident. 
Oh, dude, I, and even then saying that it's increasing value, it's got wheels, it's not a fucking investment, dude. Mm. It is a pleasure that you have it and it's worth more money. That's all it is. It's, 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 it's a good coincidence. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Well, yeah. even my Capri, I searched um, I searched up Capris on Marketplace the other day and I couldn't find one in Australia for under five grand yeah. in average condition. What, I paid you, what year is that? 92. 92. 92. 92 so that's coming into that sort of, it's not vintage, but it's, well, it's not veteran. So it'll be coming up, I think it's over 25 years the car is vintage i thought it was 30 or was it 30 yeah i just ran yeah. there so yeah Cause coming I, up i really should put fucking get the vintage rego for it because i only drive it once a week you can get club regos where you just yeah, yeah. Mm. i'll probably end up doing the same yeah it's a bit of a sports car i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> put the top down the price goes up and the top goes down bro put the top down i've never <laughs> seen it with the top on <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Fucking knows. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm hanging for a piss. I reckon sure. that's, that's a good place to wrap it up. So thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Oh, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was good. And thank you for the uh, for the home as well. <laughs> Look, mate, it's, it's always been about creativity and parties and fun and just fun. That's exactly what happens yeah. in here. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I want to roll. It's always been a smile on the face. Having yeah. fun. Yeah. Bloody oath. Radio, thanks for coming on. Easy. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget, like and subscribe everything. Make sure you jump on all my socials. Like everything. Comment on everything. Do what you need to do to fucking blow me up. Yeah, for sure. Let's build this. You! Righto. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.